Game Changers World Championship happened this past week in Berlin and was one of the craziest Valorant tournaments we've seen yet. With deep storylines, huge upsets, ridiculous plays and of course some more drama, if you're a fan of Valorant, this tournament was definitely worth watching. I'm Commend and this is my overview of the Game Changers Championship. With only 8 teams at the tournament, there were some very clear favourites coming in. The biggest by far was Cloud9 White from NA. They're probably the most clouded Game Changers team, and for good reason. They've won the last 6 NA Game Changers in a row, with a 105-6 map record and a 50-1 series record. They've been together for over 2 years, only changing their roster once to add Bob, a player with tier 1 experience in Australia who was a clear upgrade. C9 were by far the favourites for this tournament, but they weren't untouchable. The one series they did lose was to Shopify Rebellion. Shopify had always lived in C9's shadow, coming second to them at every turn. But second place was enough to make it to Berlin, and now we could see their rivalry play out on the biggest stage, and of course, it wouldn't be without the drama. But before that, the only other team that could rival C9 White was G2 Gozen. Widely considered the best team in the EU, their experienced core of Mimi, Giuliano and Petra made them a formidable opponent. But after struggling to secure a solid 5 players, would Mary and Glance be good enough to take them over the line? And this wasn't the only doubt for G2 coming in, they also technically weren't even the best EU team anymore, as they'd lost the domestic grand finals to Guild X. Guild were similar to Shopify, constantly considered second best in Europe. They'd finally managed to defeat their rivals just before Berlin though, so hoped to carry that into the land setting. The teams from South America were two more dominant ones. Team Liquid have been at the top of Brazil since 2020, with huge firepower and standout players Bastarda and Daiki. Crew wiped the floor with Latam, not dropping a single series in Game Changers. One of their players, Kunir, dropped 25 kills on Reyna against the Leviathan Core, like that Leviathan Core, so she's pretty good. Both Liquid and Crew looked to show that they could continue their regional dominance on the international stage, but with Crew facing C9 White in the first round, they'd have quite a challenge. The final two teams in the tournament were from the Pacific region. X10 Sapphire had always come second place in APAC, but finally won a grand final to just make it to Berlin. An experienced FPS player in Ginny led the team, but would that be enough to take names at LAN? And last but not least, Fennel Esports from Japan. They probably looked like the least organised team at the event, but had some cracked players including Festival and Suzu that might be able to do some damage. With the teams ready to go, there were so many questions, but there was only one way to get the answers. The first day of the tournament promised some great matches, with both favourites taking on two upstart teams. C9 White vs Crew opened the championship, two dominant teams in their region, looking to advance to the upper semi-finals. Their regional records are crazy, only two series lost for C9, none lost for Crew. Who would come out on top? Sailing, but they need to get the spike and they need to get the plant. Couple of seconds to spare, they get it done. Oh. C9 looked merciless in this first match, taking Crew down in a 13-4 Ascent and a 13-5 Haven. They moved on to the upper semis later that day against the winner of G2 vs X10. This match was a similar story. X10 just weren't on the level of G2, and Mimi looked to be a lanimal as G2 won both maps in convincing fashion. This meant we got the matchup that everyone wanted. C9 White vs G2 Gozen. North America vs Europe. Even though this was only the first day, winning this match would secure a top 3 finish, so there was a lot on the line. Ascent was first, and C9 continued their great form with a 13-7 win. With Breeze next, G2 stuck with Giuliano on Raider, meaning she'd have to play well if they wanted to bring it to Pearl. The last two, as somehow the communication wasn't there, somehow Giuliano gets a 4K into the round. 22 kills and 19 rounds later, they took it 13-6. It would all come down to Pearl, a map that C9 White had never played in an official. But not only that, they'd be up against a Yoru. G2 had C9 on the ropes in the first half, and a beautiful TP fake shows the value of Yoru on attack. Down 11-3, C9 had to do something quickly if they wanted any chance at winning. Are there for Cloud9? They've heard everything, oh. but Mimi! Oh. Uh, what a transfer! That's a Spectre, Vance! Yeah, using it like a rifle, and now only one kill away from getting an ult, but instead it's just going to be another wall to try to cross over. But this is should have a gap. Oh and she's looking for the last kill. It's going to be Mel. Only with the oh. Gordon. <laughs> she gets it! The quad kill for the defused! That clutch from Mimi was the final nail in the coffin for C9, and the number one team coming into the tournament were in the lower bracket after day one, while G2 had made top three. The first matchup on the other side of the bracket was the battle of the second places, Guild vs Shopify. Neither team really had any star players, mostly just consistent quality across the board, with solid eyes yelling from Claudia and KP. Pearl just went Shopify's way after an 8-4 comeback and overtime win, but Guild edged out Haven 13-11. Icebox was the decider, and remember when I said Shopify didn't have a star player? Forget that, 
they have Sonda. And there's a follow-up. It's Sonda. Gets oh one, my. gets two. Sonda oh my. gets four. She went 20 and 9 on Icebox, taking Shopify to the upper semis. Joining them would be one of Fennel and Team Liquid Brazil. Fennel had probably the most support out of any team in the tournament. The Japanese fans love Valorant. It didn't seem like it had mean much after a quick win on Ascent for TL though, and with their unorthodox double controller comp on Icebox, it looks over for Fennel. Suzu had other ideas though, and played Omen unlike anyone else I've ever seen. Some of her TPs were just ridiculous, but they kept working, and brought the series to a map 3 against one of the favourites. Festival's Neon looks great on Fracture as well, but unfortunately they weren't able to bring it home, and Team Liquid marched on to the upper semi-finals. Shopify vs Team Liquid was supposed to happen on day 2 as well, but Berlin has a work curfew for under 18 year olds, which Sonda is, so we have to move on to... Shopify and Team Liquid opened the day with their rescheduled match to see who would face G2 in the upper final. Sonda was the star player for Shopify once again in map 1, which they took 13-10. Up 12-10 on bind, they had the match in the bag. Around the corner, the elbow spotted, the sky utility oh! out! Powerful, no! It's stolen away from her! The sky seekers win the round for Team Liquid! The bullets that should have won them the map went into the sky hole instead, giving Brazil a lifeline, and they capitalized, winning the next 3 in a row to take bind. Icebox was the final map, but it wasn't Sonda's KO that went crazy this time, it was Bastarda's. She had over 300 ACS on this map and carried TL to a top 3 finish. Shopify were in the lower bracket, where a meeting between them and Cloud9 was on the cards, but before that, there were two more games on day 3, the start of the lower bracket. Lose here and you're on a flight home. The first was Crew vs X10, and eventually the APAC team came out on top. Despite Crew being some people's dark horse pick, they didn't show much in Berlin, although Kinnear still looked great. X10's team coordination looked better on the day, so they went on to face Shopify. In the match between Guild and Fennel, Japanese fans were disappointed to see their team lose in convincing fashion. Looking like the worst team coming in, they should be proud to have taken a map off Team Liquid, and of their great dance moves. Guild put up a solid performance and kept composed throughout, something that would be much harder against their next opponents, C9. X10 wanted to slay another dark horse in the first match of the day, and looked to be doing it on Haven as they went up 9-3, but with a 9-3 first half comes a dangerous curse, and Shopify clawed it back to overtime, eventually taking Haven 16-14. They took the momentum with them too, using it to win Pearl with a final round ace from Sonda. X10 showed promise, but just not enough to rival the top game changers teams. Shopify had done their part, now it was up to C9, and they had no trouble. C9 seemed to take losing to G2 personally, dismantling Guild in the quickest series ever played at the championship. Guild didn't put up much of a fight here, but played some solid Valorant across the tournament, but again just not enough to rival the best teams. Speaking of the best teams, Winners Finals was up next, G2 Gozen vs Team Liquid Brazil. Liquid came in with some heat, going up 5-0 on Ascent, but an ace from 16 year old Mary of G2 brought them back into it, and eventually it reached overtime. Two more clean rounds from G2 gave them the win, and with the home crowd buff, they went into Breeze having more confidence than ever. Mimi continued to show just how good her KO is, and after a clean 13-10, G2 secured a place in the Grand Finals. The North American Civil War in the lower bracket was upon us. Could Shopify change their second place narrative on the biggest stage, or would C9 take the win like they've always done against Shopify? It seemed to be the same story as always as C9 took Fracture, narrowly denying Shopify a 12-6 comeback. Haven was next, a map that C9 had only ever let one team get to double digits on. It was almost an impossible task for Shopify to win. Keyword, almost. KP called an incredible game, and they pulled out a win despite Meld's 26 and 16 KD on Chamber. They'd pushed it to a third, and it was time for another Chamber player to take over. Flowerful played the game of her life to take Shopify over the line. They'd finally done it, beating the team they never could at the biggest tournament they could. And in the heat of the celebrations, Shopify coach Rob Boys did this. But before I can explain that, I've got to go over the lower final. The momentum boosted Shopify vs Team Liquid Brazil. This was a rematch of the game that Liquid won in the upper bracket, but this time Shopify flipped that on its head, winning 13-9, 13-5 to take it 2-0 and advance to the grand finals. Alright, back to the middle finger. Now, it's not very sportsmanlike, sure, but C9Y are a team who have a major history of trash talk and game changers, and you have to imagine that Shopify were on the end of a lot of it. In the official Game Changers rulebook, he should have received a fine and a warning at most, but we all know how consistent Riot are when it comes to following their own rulebooks. Robwiz was hit with a suspension for the Grand Finals against G2 the next day. Pretty much the entire Valorant community was against this decision, including this beautiful video from Boaster, even with the C9 players stating that they didn't complain and that there's no bad blood between the teams. 
This was a devastating loss for Shopify, and it may have cost them everything. This was it, the grand final. Both Shopify and G2 were in great form coming in, but with two winning games the previous day, Shopify had some huge momentum. Flowerful and Sonda were playing out of their minds, bringing SR to a two-map lead. Only one more, and they'd be the best team in the world. But it's much easier to choke a lead when you don't have a coach, and after a demolishing from G2 on Ascent, their mental was shattered. Icebox was next, a map they'd been playing really well on so far, but again, they got ripped apart 13-2. Suddenly, their lead had gone, and with no reassurance from Wobbers, they couldn't get back into the game. They could only muster 5 rounds on the final map of Breeze, letting G2 go and take the Game Changers crown. Shopify played incredibly well at this tournament, beating their old rivals and finishing higher than anyone predicted them to. But praise has to go to G2, whose experience let them go unbeaten to take the crown. And a special mention to Mary, who's only 16 years old and played insanely well in every game. The event became the most watched female esports event ever, which is great news for Valorant and the wider community. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed this recap, it really helps me out. I've been Commend, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.